Naughty Goes to Toyland is absolutely nothing like what I was expecting. This is the first book in the Naughty series that Enid Blyton published in 1949 and I grew up watching, worshipping Noddy, in fact. I was a very big Noddy fan. Had a little Noddy car that I could pedal. Really grew up worshipping this show. But it occurred to me that I never actually watched, um, or rather read, any of the books. So I thought it was time that I checked out the first book, Noddy Goes to Toyland. And the narrative is n not at all what I was expecting. And this is basically Noddy's origin story. And we find out how Noddy came to be. And in this book, we learn, also I should point out, the book's a lot longer than I thought. It's not horrendously long, it's not, um, you know, a chapter book or anything, it is for the target audience, but it's just longer than I'd expected. But in this book, Noddy is running away from old man Carver, who lives in the woods, and he carved Woody, Woody? <laughs> Noddy, out of wood. And Noddy is running away because he is lonely. Oh, how sad. Noddy has no clothes on, and because he is just made of wood, and he bumps into Big Ears. Big Ears announces that he is a brownie, which is a kind of hobgoblin, and he asks Noddy what Noddy is, and Noddy says that he doesn't really know what he is. He's just this little wooden man who nods, and of course Noddy has nowhere to go, so Big Ears suggests that Noddy goes to Toyland, because Noddy might be a toy. When Noddy gets there, the policeman questions Noddy and says, well, you're going to have to go on trial to find out whether or not you are considered a toy. And that's going to happen um, either later that day or the next day. I can't remember exactly. Um, and in the meantime, Noddy meets various characters. We meet, um, you know, the monkey. I don't think the monkey's given a name at this point, but obviously Martha the monkey and um, Tessie Bear and all of the other characters that we kind of recognise now but they don't play prominent roles in this book at this stage and he gets his clothes, he gets the hat with the little bell he starts to resemble the Noddy that we recognise today and well I'm not going to say what happens with the rest of it or what happens with the trial but obviously you can kind of work out for yourself what the outcome is based on the fact that Noddy lives in Toyland and has lived in Toyland forever but I will say some weird catastrophic things happen in between him getting clothes and then the trial happening. I'm not going to spoil any of that. But I will say it was a an odd decision. It made sense and I can see it evoking imaginative play in children. But at the same time, it's not the route that I would have taken. But then I'm not Ina Blyton. And I didn't create this character that is loved by probably millions of children. It's definitely not what I was expecting. It seems a lot less innocent than I was expecting, just something about him being naked and then him having to go on trial. It's definitely not as juvenile, quite frankly, as I thought it was going to be. Does that work in its favour? Well, actually, yes. I think Enid Blyton recognises the fact that children are more intelligent than we give them credit for. And children have this very good thing of being able to know when something is too grown up for them. As I'm sure you're aware if like a child comes across a picture of a naked person or something, I'm not sure why this would happen frequently, but you know, if a child's reading a book or something, I'm trying to think of an example that would work, but I can't think of one. But I'm sure you're aware, as, as ineloquently as I'm putting this, if a child is not ready to learn about something that's a bit more sophisticated, they tend to just shunt away from it and they don't recognise it. But the fact that children have read this book for decades and love this book kind of suggests that actually children are, in a way, certain parts of them are more grown up than we give them credit for and they're able to deal with these subject matters. Plus they don't have a full comprehension of what trials truly are, so I guess that helps. So it was definitely different to what I was expecting, but I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed getting to know where Noddy actually came from and what the background is for this character because to my shame I had no idea. I just kind of always assumed he was a toy um, like from the off rather than there being any question of it. Of course the big question is well is he a toy? Is he actually a toy? Did the wood old, did old man Carver turn and make him as a toy or was he an ornament? Let's face it we can assume it was a toy 
it'd be a bit weird to start carving little people out of wood for no reason. But I really enjoyed it. If you grew up watching Noddy, or even if you watch Noddy today, I definitely say check out Noddy Goes to Toyland. It's a fun experience. It's nostalgic, even if you've not read it before. And it will actually increase your knowledge of something that you grew up watching, maybe in my case, worshipping. It's a, it's a lovely read. I, I think maybe, possibly, I might read some of the other books. I think there were 26 in total that Ina Blyton published, or 25, or wrote that were published on her behalf, of course. Noddy Goes to Toyland, not at all what I was expecting, but still an absolute delight. 